In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. You may kneel. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
You may be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, and then 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our, of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offering shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall exalt in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our epistle this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you alleluia the holy gospel according to saint john the first chapter there was a man sent from god whose name was john he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. 
Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Well, the Jews could not get a simple answer out of John. Who are you? They kept asking. Are you the Christ? No. Are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? No. John just kept deflecting their questions. He did not want to be known as anyone apart from Christ. He was preparing the way for the Lord, not making a name for himself. He was there to draw attention to the coming Messiah. But the Jews needed some kind of concrete answer. John was doing something new, something they had not done, giving Jews a baptism of repentance. His food, clothing, and manner of preaching were just like a prophet's. Who does he really think he is? Why did the Jews need a baptism of repentance? They had the law and the prophets. They had Abraham. They followed the traditions. What John was doing contradicted their teaching. John taught that they needed something new. 
John didn't have a problem with his identity. He was not confused about his role at all. He was to point to Christ. The Jewish leaders and their followers were the ones with the identity crisis. They believed it was their ancestry and works which made them who they are, not the grace of God. They pointed to themselves. This, however, was a flawed way of thinking because all our ancestry and works are soiled with sin. We are not self-made. We can't fulfill the purpose for which we are created by our strength. We can't, by our works, know our Creator or serve Him or deliver ourselves from death and hell. Our works, apart from Christ, can only make us children of wrath. For we were born with Adam's image, a broken, twisted generation, despising God and His commandments, living for ourselves, full of pride. We did not know, nor did we desire to have a way to God. In this state of original sin, we could never stand before our holy God and live. We were born with an identity crisis in spiritual death, denying the one who made us with a desire to live apart from the Maker's will. This, by the way, is the underlying reason for all the identity madness in this world. How did we get to where we are today? Well, we start teaching children that they have to figure out who they are for themselves. They have to make up their identity. No one can tell them who they are, not even their parents. Their identity is not determined by the God who made them, but by their feelings, even if those desires might contradict empirical truth about their bodies or be harmful to the body or mind or neighbor. They are nevertheless, these feelings are what make you who you are. Of course, that means, according to the world, that the old Adam is the determining factor for a person's identity. The devil can do a lot of damage with this kind of philosophy. The world thinks that following every feeling is freedom, but it is in fact slavery to him who controls them. And though such a life might bring temporary happiness and earthly glory, it's misery in the long term because rebellion against God's will will produce discontentment, coveting, despair, bitterness, anger, pride, division, and death. A person can never be content with an identity he makes for himself because he will always be less than or contrary to the one God created him to be. And without repentance, God will say to that person on the judgment day, I do not know you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. God, however, did not want this to be the case for us, but rather he so wanted to repair the image and to remake us to be who he willed us to be to bring us back to himself, to fill us with his righteousness, chose to identify with humanity. He humbled himself to be born of a virgin, born in mortal flesh, but without the sin which corrupts us. Rather, he lived perfectly obedient to the Father in whom he shares one essence. To know Jesus is to know the Father. He is Yahweh, the one true God and also true man. Yet God, so that he would not look 
at our sins so that he would not identify us with the wretched creatures that we are but rather bring down his righteousness to us instead of his righteous anger upon us made him who knew no sin to become sin for us all our sins were accounted for on Jesus at his crucifixion so that Jesus's righteousness would be accounted to you Jesus's righteousness that becomes who you are do not seek to be known as anyone apart from Christ <clears throat> identify with him on his perfect son the father poured down his wrath so that grace and mercy would rain down upon you and death could not hold him who bore the perfect image of the eternal God so Jesus rose from the dead and was exalted to the highest place to live and reign forever at the right hand of God all mankind now has his own flesh and blood on God's throne granting forgiveness and new life to all who believe in him God has chosen in Christ not to look at your sins but to look upon you as he looks upon his own beloved son as his dearly beloved children he has clothed you with the garments of salvation as the prophet Isaiah said he covered you with the robe of righteousness like like a bridegroom decked out like a priest or a bride adorned with jewels your garments are washed clean by the blood of Jesus and you shine with his image God has placed his own name upon you and made you heirs with Christ of his kingdom so your identity is wrapped up with who Jesus is his identity not with your former life not with your sins he has made you born again in his image and with his spirit that is your identity you are baptized children of God and they are being made ever more like him that's the answer to the question who are you you are a baptized Christian created in Christ Jesus to serve him your works and accomplishments don't make you who you are your works and accomplishments flow from who you are when you are doing good works you are doing them by the new life which the Holy Spirit has given you do not glorify yourselves then in what you do but the God who does them and who made you and redeemed you let all that you say and do point to the Lamb of God even as John the Baptist did and show forth his merciful forgiving love to the world let your identity be with him who is on the throne whether in your homes in your workplaces in school in the community remember your identity in every vocation of life to offer thanksgiving to God and glorify his name may all who see you acknowledge that you are an offspring which the Lord has blessed when you sin however you're having an identity crisis that's what sin is it's an identity crisis instead of living according to the righteousness which Christ has given you you're recalling the old Adam you're reflecting Adam's image you're glorifying yourself but that was your old life that was the life of slavery and death do not turn back to such folly but be renewed by the spirit to keep it from regaining power over us the sinful flesh needs to be continually put down 
and the new man strengthened. Baptism indicates this, as the small catechism says. It indicates a lifetime of renewal, of spiritual dying and rising through contrition and repentance. By the way, that is the gift of private confession, because there you are able to audibly, with a witness present, bring to the surface all the thoughts and works of the old Adam so that they can be put to death. You're testifying that you hate the old Adam and his works and ways, and you want to live according to the Spirit. And Christ gives you his holy absolution to remind you who you are. You are forgiven, no matter what you've done. His words wash you clean and allow you to start new as innocent children of God. Holy Communion also speaks to your identity. You don't come to the altar on your own terms or with a worthiness of works righteousness. Your faith clings to Christ who is worthy. Although you aren't even worthy to untie one strap of his sandal, Christ invites you to dine with him like a royal priesthood, like a holy family and feed on his true, precious body and blood. Here in repentant faith, sinners are welcomed as royal heirs of heaven. And fed with Christ, your lives will reflect his mercy and love to your neighbor as you reign in life over sin and death with the power that the Holy Spirit has given you. The Holy Spirit, through word and sacrament, prepares for Christ to return to you, keeping you blameless in the forgiveness of sins. You remain in and with Christ, so that when he comes in glory, you would receive him with joy as your brother and savior. And then, at the resurrection, you will be made completely like him, immortal, without sin. All the former things will pass away. The destroyer of mankind will be destroyed. And then Christ will not ask, who are you? He will know you. You are the one he has called by name in baptism. You are the one he fed with his word and sacrament. He was with you all through this earthly life, strengthening you with his spirit. And so he will welcome you by name. Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may kneel for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist to proclaim the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Grant that we who prepare to celebrate the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our hearts the Christ announced by your forerunner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Bless Matthew, our Synod President, Richard, our District President, and all pastors in Christ. Gather and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice and send faithful preachers who will confess your truth especially answering the need of St. Peter Lutheran Church in Portage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Preserve them from dangers to body and soul. Guide them by your word in wise paths, and keep them firm in the faith until life's end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Righteous Lord, you rule over all things in heaven and on earth until that day when your Son comes in glory to usher in his kingdom. Give wisdom and insight to all leaders that we may live peaceable lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator of all, Many in our midst have been afflicted with pain, sickness, trials, and difficulties. Be merciful to those who are close to us, especially Karen, Amber, Bruce, James, Lynette, Kelly, Norma, Betty, Charles, Janet, and Clorinda, that they may be granted help or strength to endure their afflictions. Help us all to see that when Christ returns in glory, our bodies will be incorruptible and immortal when he makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O giver of life, we thank you for the birthdays of Betty, Miranda, Rebecca, Christine, and Jennifer. In the new birth of baptism, grant them newness of life and the forgiveness of sins, that each day they would glorify your name in all they say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your church eagerly awaits the return of her bridegroom. Grant that we would not grow weary. Strengthen us through your word and sacraments that we would ever hold fast your promise of salvation won for us by Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victor victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always.
In addition to our Christmas Eve services at 6 and 11, and Christmas Day at 9, and then the next week uh, we have uh, a New Year's Eve service at, at 6. Okay? All right. Um, so anyway, if you'd like, you can, you can help uh, support. 